Ladies and gentlemen, I'll now call to order the uh, September 15th regular session of the Fullerton City Council. Madam Clerk, please read the roll. Mayor Seaborn? Present. Mayor Pro Tem Fitzgerald? Here. Council Member Chafee? Here. Council Member Flory? Here. Council Member Whitaker? Here. Thank you. At this time, will you please rise for the invocation? <coughs> God and keep the blessing you have bestowed upon the city of Fullerton. Our beautiful scenery, our wonderful climate, our abundant natural resources. Bless our children. May they receive the love, nurturing, and support they need to become responsible, contributing, and successful adults. Bless our veterans. Protect them as they go forth with courage and fortitude to defend our country and preserve our freedom. Bless our community <coughs> activists. May they raise the dialogue on issues of interest and concern with respect and tolerance for the viewpoints of others. Bless our clergy. May they foster spiritual growth in our community through guidance, ministry, and counsel. Bless our volunteers. May their passion and community commitment by an inspiration for others to join in giving back to our community. Bless the homeless and less fortunate. May they find nourishment, shelter, support, and hope. Bless our community and may we embrace our diversity value our differences, and ensure everyone has a voice in our governance as we continue to make Fullerton an outstanding place to live, work, play, visit, and raise a family. May we ask this in your holy name we pray. Amen. 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 And you be seated. such as, you know, the homeless and also the youth. Um, and we are just a, uh, I want to say, a rock in the city of Fullerton and want to partner and continue to foster the growth that is happening, especially the spiritual growth that is in Fullerton. So we thank you uh, once again uh, for allowing us to have this time, um, and we hope to do it again. Thank you so much. We have to leave for the service. Thank you. Now will you please rise for the presentation of the colors. Now join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Ready? Begin. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Please be seated. This time, I believe we have a closed session report. Mr. City yes. Attorney. Consistent with our new policy regarding uh, labor negotiations, I have to report out a certain rejected proposals uh, regarding the Florida Municipal Employees Federation. <coughs> rejected proposals for reporting out our 625 uh, 15 city proposal to FMPF um, was uh, rejected. 7 2015 FMEF proposal to the city of Florida was rejected. Item 5. I believe I asked for item 5 to be pulled. Um, it is our policy on anti harassment. There were some uh, revisions that the council had uh, suggested to um, our HR director, Grinch Beatty, and she's been making those revisions. And we've had a couple of updates and reiterations that. Uh, like to present and uh, I don't know if you've already entered those in and you have a revised version you want to present or if you want to do that on the fly. Uh, I have them ready on the fly. I don't have them in a okay. copy. Okay, so on this particular item uh, it's been substantially revised and I really appreciate the work that Gretchen and her staff did putting this together. Um, <coughs> there's a uh, one of the changes that I had requested uh, from her was um, from the the revised yes, the, the latest version. I've asked okay. for a couple of additional revisions. Thank so I'll flow specific pages. Right. In fact, uh, I have my 
language that we had discussed. I don't have the specific page. Hang on just a second. The first, I believe, is on page 16, section F. I guess we the first the very first change we discussed was, um, would it would appear under application on section A. Okay, section A. Because we're looking at these revisions. Vietnamese, Spanish, and Korean. So I'd like the translators to uh, speak in their uh, language and address the audience and ask anyone who needs translation services to raise their hand. And then uh, Mr. Ely can, can start. You can use the microphone right up there. 我是中文翻译，有没有讲中文的人需要我做翻译？所有的通行编、登编，各位，哪个看这个？登编的，请注意，你看，请问问，爱文，看这个，这个大家讲。Are the translators asking whether anybody needs the translation services? And so, for the first two, nobody indicated such a need. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Buenas noches a todos los miembros del público. Se les informa de que si desean servicios de interpretación al español para presentar comentario, levanten su mano, por favor. So let's see if we can get the two. So we would uh, thank and, uh, the, the uh, two that had no uh, respondents, and probably uh, we'll, we'll see you at a future meeting, I'm, I'm sure, so thank you for that. And Dave, now with that, we'd uh, ask you to give us your presentation. I, I have a very brief little presentation here to talk about the, so the general the process of, of district right. formation. Dave, the interpreters are still running around. Mm -hmm. Give them just a moment. 우리 연사들은 다 같이 따라갔어요. 응? 우리 연사들은 다 같이 따라갔어요. If the interpreters like to get the people that need interpretation interpreting down here closer to you or if you need to get back there. Go ahead take take a couple of moments and do that. 한국어 필요가 한국어 필요 아 동역이 필요하시면요. 그 기계가 없기 때문에 저랑 같이 같은 쪽에 앉으셔야 돼요. 그럼 이쪽에 같이 앉으실래요? 아, 이거 말하는 거다 통역해 주실 거예요? 예. 어, 그럼 다 같이 여기 옆에 이분 옆으로 앉아 있죠. Stand over by the aisle and just uh, make sure that they can all uh, hear you when you talk. And we'll ask our speaker to pause periodically so that you can make the appropriate translation. Sir, you in the back row. Should come forward. Thank you. Well, did you not raise your hand? Oh, I was raising it for. Oh. Sorry about that. Um, I, I just have a, a brief presentation of the general aspects of, of districting and things that we consider, which will then lead into exactly how we how we're going to try and get to get to all this information. Um, when we're drawing districts, there are there are some very solid legal requirements that we have to that we have to consider. Um, and in addition to that, there's a whole lot of there's a whole lot of general um, general things. Uh, I'll talk about the legal requirements later. Um, we we look at the geographic structure of the of the city, the neighborhoods, physical layout, school districts, and other areas. So any kind of, ge of defined geography. Geographic units that exist in the city, and uh, identify and incorporate the input in terms of the importance of various ones in terms of representation. Which one is this? Sir, please move this side. We're also going to do some analysis of data regarding political participation, looking at voter registration and voter turnout, voter selection, and the ethnic share based on surnames of the of the registration and the, and the turnout, and that 
that analysis will go into um, evaluating the potential for vote dilution in any kinds of district configurations. And again, we'll want public input regarding um, you know, people's attitudes about what, what is likely to be dilutive in this circumstance based on their knowledge of, of the city. Um, we'll look at the demographic characteristics um, based on census data. So we have the, the, the basic data that we use for redistricting all the time, population by ethnicity, voting age population by ethnicity, and citizen voting age population by ethnicity. Then in addition to that, we'll look at a, a, a variety of socioeconomic characteristics. Um, income, home ownership, age of housing, length of residence, and additional things. And again, public input would be very important in evaluating the importance of various different aspects of socioeconomic characteristics um, and um, additional characteristics that might be considered in addition to what, to what I developed initially. Um, and so throughout the entire process and, and in analyzing any of these areas, public input is very important. There we go. Mm -hmm. um, the legal criteria is basically federal law and their state law. Um, federal law, there's three, three primary points. One is um, equal, equal protection, you know, I mean, equal population in, in all of the districts. The, the population of the city will need to be divided as, as equally as possible among whatever number of districts we choose. Often in this process, the number of districts is determined ahead of time. So we'll have the additional complexity in this process of, of evaluating different numbers of potential numbers of districts. But whatever number of districts we have, each of the districts has to have approximately the same population. And that would be based on the, on the most recent census total population. Um, there's also um, protection from the 14th Amendment, the Voting Rights Act, um, for Minority Voting Rights Act, my, Minority Voting Rights. Uh, there's two primary elements of it. We can't have a discriminatory purpose. Um, that's, pretty, that's pretty easy to avoid. Um, it's just, you know, not having a discriminatory purpose. Um, we also can't have vote dilution. And, and vote dilution does not have to be intentional. So it, it requires more analysis to avoid the potential of vote dilution. Um, because you could have you could have a plan that was adopted based on the best you know, best intentions in the world that would end up being dilutive. And so part of our analysis in doing this and part of the public input that we will get it will be directed towards the, avoiding anything that results in vote dilution. Um, the equal protection clause then permitted to also require that race not be a predominant factor in in what we're doing. It has to be considered in order to comply with, with item two, but it can't be the predominant factor. It can't drive the entire process. How can it be? I mean, isn't the whole thing racially based? Isn't that why we're all here? Isn't that what the Equal Voting Rights Act is all about? Um, I, I, it just no. sounds disingenuous for me to say, for you to say that, and I know these aren't your words coming out of your mouth, but race must not predominate, then what is this about? Um, it's about representation for different neighborhoods, and those different neighborhoods But the neighborhoods are being determined by race. No, the neighborhoods will be determined by our process. We will look at race only to the extent that we're evaluating whether or not the result is dilutive. Um, what we'll be looking at in determining what the boundaries should be will be all these other characteristics that I've talked about, all the different representational in interests that different people in different parts of the city have. I, I guess what my difficulty is is the reason that we are engaging in this exercise is because the city has been sued 
one by Miss Kitty Jaramillo and another by John Pig, and her specific allegations are that they have been discriminated against and that their vote that they are unable to place a candidate of their ethnic background on the city council. So in view of that context, it just seems a little disingenuous to say that race must not predominate. But I think it's the essential driving factor here. It's like being at Alice's tea party. Uh, well, it, it, that's not my experience, and that's not that. I, I certainly hope that that will not be the process here. The process should be about representation, the, the most effective representation for everyone within the city. The law requires that it not be dilutive of minority voting rights, and so there has to be some attention paid to that. But that does not mean that that's the driving factor in, in the process. The process should be about effective representation for the entire city. Um, and, and that will be my goal in implementing the outreach plan that, that we've talked about. Um, when we look at state law, the requirements are much less well defined. Um, the election code in numerous places repeats these four points. Um, topography, geography, cohesiveness, contiguity, integrity, and compactness of territory, and community of interest. Um, none of these is very well spelled out in the law. Um, all of them basically come down to requirement for a functional geography. So the districts, people, districts be connected in ways that people will recognize the, the, what district they're in and can communicate with each other easily. And, um, and, um, districts that reflect um, different representational interests that, that may exist throughout the city, different ways that people are organized for, um, for expressing their opinions and, and, and all those sorts of things. Um, there's a, five general geographic um, criteria that I will be asking people to give me input on in all, in all of the aspects of, of the, um, the public participation process. One is de defining areas that function as neighborhoods or communities um, where people already think of themselves as, as being grouped together and interacting naturally. Um, whether it's through a neighborhood association or just a general, general regional thing, um, identifying those areas that should, that should be kept together within a district. Um, in addition to that, we want to look at neighborhoods and communities that may be distinct unto themselves in terms of how they interact, but that they share common interests with other neighborhoods and communities. Um, that could be grouped together to form a basis of districts. We also want to look at physical features that may act as either barriers or connections. Um, major streets can operate either way. Um, sometimes they divide divide neighborhoods on one side from the other. Sometimes they connect along the length of them. Um, and so identifying the important physical features that tie people together or separate people uh, will be an important uh, an important point in forming um, forming districts. Um, additionally, we want to look at communities that are very dissimilar to each other, ones that have conflicting representational interests. Um, and there can be many ways that that, that, that exists. Um, one of the one of the most significant that often that you often have in the city is um, um, residential areas that are primarily concerned with with traffic and overcrowding and, and sort of restraining activity in other areas that are primarily concerned with economic development and, and those sorts of things. They would have conflicting interests in terms of, of what, what the council acts on. And so um, getting the various different voices, their own separate um, representation of the council would mean that it's 
that those areas should, to the extent possible, be put into separate districts. Um, and then there's significant locations or points of interest. Um, these can be major facilities that people share and use. Or they're places where communities come together. They can also be um, things like uh, traffic intersections that cause lots of problems for the neighbors or those kinds of things. Anything that has an impact, either positive or negative, on, on the surrounding areas that, that may be of particular concern to people in certain areas, um, those also go into the formation of what a district, what a district should look like. Um, because the districts have to be equal population, um, we have to look at the population distribution across the city. Um, one of the things that we will be using um, for people to provide public input is a map similar to this one that shows the population by census tract and by census block group um, throughout the city. We'll ask people to use these maps to make suggestions to, to be able to get an idea of how big a district would need to be um, when they make recommendations. About that. I have a quick question on that. Um, and maybe I'm getting the cart before the horse here, but it just occurred to me. Uh, does this mean ultimately precinct maps would be changing and the precincts would be more reflective of district boundaries and that sort of thing? Um, quite possibly, yes. I mean, we, we will consider the precinct geography when we're doing it. And I don't know that it means a whole lot to anybody that's not an elected official because when you're knocking on doors, you have precinct lists. But it just occurred to me, I know some people uh, are very familiar with their voting or polling place. Um, and some people don't. Yeah, um, there's one issue that comes up quite often. The precinct geography is maintained by county officials and the census geography is, is separate. And so the census geography doesn't always reflect the, the precinct um, boundaries. One of the things that we try and do is identify situations where there is a precinct boundary that's a much more natural um, Divider. Um, if, if we do that, then we have to make some estimation of the population division across it. But usually, those are those are minor things that don't really affect um, the equal population issues that we have to examine. So that will be that will be an aspect of, of what we look at going through this. And I will have precinct maps, um, precinct lines available on everything that we're working with. Um, so, in terms of the specifics of uh, what we're doing and how we're getting going with this, um, we're going to be scheduling meetings with individuals and small groups um, with me in a, in a small office with all of my computer set up. I will have some generalized sample plans that people can look at and work with, um, and, and they will be able to make make their proposals or discuss ideas um, <coughs> using, using my software and my, my ability to manipulate the software. Um, a lot of times in these processes, people try and have a tool online or something to, to draw districts with. And you get a handful of people who are capable of doing it, but most of the comments that I've heard in hearings regarding that is, well, it's a nice tool, but I didn't have time to figure out how to use it. These meetings are intended to avoid that problem, to give people the opportunity to have a really, a really meaningful opportunity to create proposals um, that that would then be considered by the public at public meetings and, and those sorts of things. Um, so we'll be doing um, the first groups of those meetings uh, September 23rd through the 26th, and also October 3rd, October 1st through, um, through the 3rd. Um, the city clerk's office will be making um, appointments, taking, taking appointments for that. And um, at the bottom of this, for this slide, we have the, the number, that, the phone number that will be used for making those appointments. Where's the location of these meetings? Does it even take place here in City Hall? Uh, yes, we're going to uh, set up in the third floor conference room, I believe. Uh, so Mr. Lee's equipment can stay there for the extended period of time and walk up his uh, 
this computer. Okay, so these specific uh, meeting dates, uh, and I don't see times on here, but these specific dates will be here at City Hall. Yeah, and basic, the general time is from 10 to 6. Um, we'll be trying to schedule meetings that are either an hour or an hour and a half long, um, probably with a 15 minute break in between them. So I don't want to get the cart before the horse again, but I got to ask the question: um, Are there going to be other opportunities later in the evening for those that don't get off work before six to be able to contact you and express their concerns about what they feel the neighborhood is? Um, yeah, we'll be very flexible about um, about when we do the scheduling. This we're, we will try to use these parameters, but I can be available much later um, you know, if, if it's necessary to accommodate people who want to have something. We, we'll have a lot of flexibility in terms of the timing. Well, I'm wondering if there's not a uh, space at the community center that we can kind of allocate for a longer period of time that maybe has broader hours. That if you can accommodate that, um, maybe a series of workshops that are more in the evening, more opportunities to meet with people in the evening, and maybe that's an easier place to get in and out of at those later hours. We'll certainly look at that, but regardless, we'll accommodate uh, other requests into the, the evenings. We have the Saturday dates on here. Uh, well. we'll look at the community center. There was some conflicts with the, the roofs uh, for a number of days over there. Since we're been thankfully very busy there, but we will uh, we'll make the accommodation and again get into the evening hours, even if it is here at City Hall. So I see a series of um, various community outreach meetings. I would imagine that that means you're going to go into different parts of the city and have different meetings with different neighborhoods to solicit their input. Um, are you going to be doing office hours later on, such as in maybe March or April? Um, yeah, the, the overall plan is that we, we do this in two, in two parts. So the initial part is mostly collecting information from the public and educating the public about the process. Um, at the end, of, so we'll have the initial set of, of individual meetings, we'll have the first four public meetings. The, the agenda for those public meetings will be determined largely by what happens in, in the individual meetings, plus what, what we feel needs to be there. So there will be whatever proposals have been generated um, and submitted to the public, we will have available at those meetings. Um, in addition to tools that we'll have to, to allow the public to, to learn about the process and to, and to give us their information. Um, following that first round of, of meetings, we'll have a report, I'll have, do a report back to the council in which I will also include um, a series of my proposals based on the input that we've gotten from that. Um, they, may, they may reflect proposals that have been put in by other people, but likely other alternatives that I, that I assemble. Um, and then, then there will be a little break in the process over for the holidays, we'll start up again um, in the new year, um, where people have had an opportunity to look at all of these proposals. We'll have another round of, of, of individual meetings so that people can refine proposals if they want to, generate new ones if they're not happy with anything that's there, or just be able to study the various proposals in more detail um, and get more information about them. I have a question. In your first round of meetings with individuals and small groups, uh, you're proposing to do this over two periods of time spanning seven days. How big can a small group be? Are you talking about five people or 20 people? Um, <coughs> six or less is ideal. I mean, we may accommodate larger groups if necessary, but a larger, with a larger group it's very difficult unless there's designated spokespersons, you know, to be able to actually do what they want rather than me doing everything. In well, I could see where that would work if you had a neighborhood representative or committee or homeowners association, something like that. But otherwise, it doesn't seem to be like it would be very representative because your time is limited to be able to do that. It, it's not a particularly representative process. 
What it is is giving the people who. I thought this was all about representation. Well, that's why we have the other parts of the process. Um, there's always some people who are more informed and more interested in this process. Um, and these meetings will give them an opportunity to have a deeper, a deeper level of input. Um, and um, to educate them, we, we did this in Whittier, um, and I think that it worked. It worked very well. We had a lot of just individual, individual citizens of the city who were interested in the process and wanted to learn about it. We had people from various interest groups that that were active within the city. We had people from some neighborhood associations. We had people from Whittier College. We had just all sorts of groups um, that that were interested. Did you do the work in Santa Barbara? Um, I didn't. I I I was working for the plaintiffs in Santa Barbara. Okay, I had a quick question to follow up on that, and then you can continue. Um, for the second round, when you have some idea of what the districts might look like under certain conditions, is there an easy way for people to be able to give you an address and you to say, yeah, under this map, you're here. Under this map, you're now in this district. To be able to give that to them fairly quickly on the fly, um, yeah, that should be that should be relatively easy to do. Um, I, I believe that the city has has online tools that let people do that with city facilities that are already there, um, and so we would be able to tie various proposals into that. I think that would be an excellent online tool for people to see the progress being made and for them to be able to key in an address and it tells them, oh, you're in under uh, this proposed map, you'd be in this district. Under this proposed map, you would either be in the same or different district. I think that would be a very useful tool to have online uh, for what it's worth. Um, well, and then... You know, once we go through the second round of workshops, then we'll have a, a second round of the, of the public meetings. And that's why I was saying the, 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 the workshops themselves are not terribly representative because they're only, they only reflect people who have the time and inclination to get into the depth of it. And that's not going to be representative of the city population. But the public, um, the public meetings should be more representative. And it should allow the public more generally to express their opinions about the work that was done by um, these people in, in the more, um, in, you know, in the less representative uh, process. Um, and then at the, at the end of the process, we'll bring the report back to the council, which will include all of the proposals that have been created during the process and some in appendices and, like, and probably have um, a, a, a smaller number of recommended proposals um, that you know, with my recommendation uh, based, on, based on the process. Obviously, you will be free to ignore my ignore my recommendations or, um, or request additional maps or any, any of those sorts of things. I have a quick question. How early with the two rounds of meetings that you're going to have in the various parts of our community, um, what kind of advertising will you use? How will, you, how will we get the word out that these meetings are occurring? And how long in advance will you start advertising those? <laughs> I think the answer to that is more like how won't we advertise this. We will have um, translations in all of our Latin acquired languages. We'll use our regular advertising notices to the paper and on our website. We, there's something in here that says at some point we do a direct mailing. I'm looking to make sure I got this right. Direct mailing to every household in the city. So everybody's going to get a direct mailing. Um, we're going to have basically a whole campaign blitz to get the word out. So. Oh, as a follow-up on that, um, we've had issues in the past with sending out direct mail to um, uh, different plan developments where you may have one HOA point of contact or address 
or and not necessarily the individual addressees, and I can see this in certain apartment complexes as well. Um, how do we overcome that? Do we rely on utilities, or do we have other databases? Yeah, well, we're address databases. Um, so that you're right, that does happen sometimes depending on the development project to use the, the one representative, the owner of the... I just know on several of our public notices, they went specifically to meter addresses, um, and that did not necessarily get to the consumer. Yeah, we use our more typical is what uh, we've been doing in community development or parks and rec. We use the GIS map and draw a boundary and get all of the physical addresses okay. versus the utility billing that we have used in some, some occasions. Okay. We also have the uh, e-list on our website. People can sign up to get the e-list blast directly to them also. <coughs> I'm not answering these questions because there's an outreach firm that's doing this cooperation with the, the city. So with that, uh, sorry, go ahead. I was, uh, the, again, the public hearing tonight is to get us started and, and outline this process of, of where we are suggesting starting uh, quickly. We're prepared to get the word out and get the uh, individual meetings and publicize that. that uh, particularly focus on this first phase here, getting us to the uh, December end of the year. Uh, so with that, we'll take your direction and uh, all right, active All right, this uh, is a public hearing that is open and uh, we'll now take public comments on item number 18, community participation plan for creation of district boundaries for district elections. Anybody wishing to speak on item 18 can now come forward and do so. Thank you, Mr. Mayor and Councilman and the city staff for the opportunity to speak with you tonight. <coughs> and the double thank you for your service to our community. My name is Peter Chang and I've got the best job I've ever had as a Retired to medical doctor and psychiatry. After 30 years of civil service, state of California, Metropolitan State Hospital, Normal, California. Fullerton is my hometown ever since I moved in 1980 from the state of Michigan. I have raised my four children here and school from elementary to high school. <coughs> I'm here to I'm here today to uh, voice my support for district election in Fullerton because I'd like to get from council members support help for minority Asian Pacific Island. And their voice to be heard for population is increased, unbelievably increased lately. The last four or five years, and having their viral issues to be heard. I believe you know better than I do, a hundred times better than I do, since I am not a politician, you are. I believe you are a very uh, good politician, and uh, as far as I know, you are very good politicians, uh, good reputation, because you make a Fullerton, City of Fullerton, very good reputation, I heard many times about City of Fullerton. Furthermore, uh, well, I want to make a long story short. I don't want to spend that, you know, wait on people too long. I also wish you could educate the public for these issues. Now, uh, since I've got to retire, I play very often time in Fullerton Public Golf Course. It's amazing. It's different from five, six years ago. I thank you for making full of the public golf course better. 
and uh, they people over there, you know, when they play uh, golf, they thank you guys here. Every time they play, oh, it's different. Oh, of course, it's different. For I, I want to live for them forever. <laughs> well, thank you for sharing your night, and God bless you and your family. Thank you. Good evening, council members. My name is Mario Villamil and I represent the community of Richmond. I have been living in that community for 20 years. I'm also the president of the organization Orange County Youth um, Soccer League. Yo he estado involucrado en la escuela Richmond y formé parte de un grupo hace tiempo atrás, Valencia Task Force. I have been involved in the community of Richmond and I was part of a group some time back, a Valencia Task Force. Task Force. Uh -huh. ah, en ese tiempo, ahí donde ahora ustedes están sentados. At that ah, time, at that place where you are sitting now. Había realmente gente del concilio que trabajaba para la there were people of the council that really worked for the community. And I can quote some of the achievements that were done uh, uh, by um, their work with another organization called o OCO, and, uh, OCO, and also some of the other council members at that time. One of the biggest uh, achievements was uh, the um, lighting of uh, Richmond Park. The community clinic, which gives service to people uh, of low income. Un semáforo en la intersección de Valencia y Highland. A street light at the intersection of Valencia and Highland. Ya que representaba un peligro para los Los niños que van a la escuela Richmond y Maple. Which represented a danger for kids who go to the schools uh, Richmond and Maple. Lamentablemente, Unfortunately, ya no pudieron obtener los votos. They couldn't no get se, enough votes. O no sé el proceso. Or I don't understand the process. Político, el, <coughs> political que or los, electoral. Que se crea para that que esa created, gente pudiera ser elegible. So that these people would have been re-elected. Así que... Ese grupo tuvo que, que deshacerse. So therefore that group I had to leave. Por falta de apoyo por parte de la ciudad. Due to lack of support from the city. Sí. Así es que me gustaría. So I would like. Que se, se diera el máximo apoyo a esta propuesta del señor. That you give your full support to this proposal from this gentleman. Ya que nuestras comunidad, comunidades. En, um, especialmente nuestra comunidad latina ha sido since our communities por particularly our latino community has been forgotten by you guys le voy a, a dar un, unas citaciones so I'll give you some quotes yo siento que nos han, no, han, nos, han nos han dejado de apoyar y nos han olvidado that make me feel that you have uh, negated your support and that you have forgotten us en primer lugar en parte de la región la comunidad trabajó First of all, the park arrangement, the community worked hard to get that lighting, and what has happened? We have been displaced, our kids cannot use the park, why? Due to bureaucratic issues from the city, that monopolize that, and give preference to certain groups. Entonces, so, ¿a quién recurrimos? So, who, who do we turn to? Yo he hablado con varios de ustedes aquí. I have spoken to several of you here. Y ninguno de ustedes ha podido responder a la demanda que tenemos de esa comunidad. And none of you have been able to respond to the claim that we have in that community. Últimamente nos han cerrado el centro comunitario de la, del, del parque de la Richmond. Lately, you've closed down the community center at Richmond Park. Sí. Ese centro comunitario debe servicio a esa comunidad. That community center should give service to that particular community. 
tuvo una, una, una reunión con la comunidad. Has it, did anyone of you had a meeting with the community to explain to them la razón de the reasons for closing that particular community center? So please, it's time Thank you. that you listen to us, that you listen to our community. We're also part of the city of Fullerton. Thank you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, city council members and city staffs, to giving me opportunity to speak with you tonight. Uh, I have been living in uh, Fullerton the last six years and working as a property management uh, manager. Sir, can you state your name, please? Sure. My name is Tan Chung. Thank you. In fact, uh, when we have, uh, you know, national uh, leaders, we all know their name and their faces. But tonight, it is the very first time I'm facing you as a city council member. And I, frankly, I don't even know your name. You know? So it is, it's probably by negligence. But I hope that doesn't apply to other people. So what I heard, uh, you know, this uh, this uh, district election is coming. So what what will happen is we'll have a better communication with our council member, and then it will create better participation and better co cooperation with the communities. So I think it is a very positive move. So. I'm really requesting you, or asking you, let this process go through, so that it'll create our community be uh, more participant with the uh, members. I mean, uh, uh, you know, city members, like me, citizens, and between council member and us. So I'm really hope that uh, this can, uh, this process can go through. So this will really happen. So we deal, which will create this beautiful city more beautiful and goes really well for day after day. Really. Thank you. Thank you. My name is Young Shin, and uh, it has been 25 years uh, since I, I started to reside in uh, the city of Fullerton, and I'm working as a realtor. First of all, uh, thank you for having me and I mean, uh, let, let, letting me speak. And uh, thank you, uh, Mayor, and all the councilmen. Uh, in 1950, the uh, city of Fullerton has been growing in population more than 10 Since 1950, uh, more than before, and I believe that uh, the increase of the population was contributed by uh, minority uh, groups. Uh, I'm a Korean American, and uh, 70 to 80 percent of my clients are minority. 그들과의 대화 중에서 많은 사람들이 플로턴에 거주하는 소수 민족들이 시디 발전에 기여하는 것에 비해 받는 혜택은 오히려 적다는 것을 말하는 것을 경험했습니다. According to their feedback, my clients' feedback, they uh, tell me that uh, comparing to uh, their contribution to the city, the benefit and advantage they get from the city is so little. Uh, 아니라, 
I'm not saying that uh, uh, that I, I, I sh we should blame the city or the council, but instead of that, I think the uh, compared to the uh, in compared to the contribution that they have been made, uh, uh, they are getting so little in terms of, of advantage and benefit. 우리 이웃 도시 브랜나파기나 베나암 시들도 새로운 선거구 제도의 도입을 검토하고 있고 또 주민들의 압도적인 지지를 받고 있습니다. Uh, our neighboring cities, which are uh, Buena Park and uh, Anaheim, they are also uh, in, uh, getting the new uh, rule or new uh, regulation in terms of a uh, new district for voting. And uh, they are supported by the uh, citizens. 이제는 우리 시프로턴 시의 더큰 발전을 위해서 각 커뮤니티를 위해 열심히 일하는 일하며 도움을 줄수 있는 시원을 선출할 때 됐다고 믿습니다. I believe that it is time uh, for our Fullerton, uh, the citizens of Fullerton, to find and elect the city councils who are ready to uh, support and work and serve. The uh, community and the city for the uh, better city and the, for the better development. 그래서 플로턴 시가 인종에 관계 없이 교육, 추억, 어, 또 시로부터 혜택 등에서 평등한 기회를 가질 수 있는 살기 좋은 곳으로 더 발전할 수 있도록 힘써 주시기를 부탁드립니다. So I am uh, asking you that uh, I, I hope that uh, this city of Fullerton would be the city where everyone. Uh, can have the equal opportunity for education, for jobs, and uh, for for all these things, uh, regardless of their ethnicity, so that uh, they could uh, this city could be a, a wonderful city to live in. Kamzanda. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good evening, Mr. Mayor, City Council. My name is Arnel Dino, and I am a member. Um, I've been a resident of Fullerton 32 of my 40 years. And I I'm from the east side of Fullerton, borderline Placentia. And the reason why I'm, I'm up here isn't because I'm Korean or Hispanic. It's about diversity. And it's about creating a diverse council that reflects all the communities in the city, not just not just Korean, not just Hispanic, not just East Side, West Side, South. That right now the fa the facts are these: we have two council members who are currently almost next door neighbors. We have twenty three percent. We have twenty three percent Asian population in the city, and we've only had in the history of the city only one Korean American um, councilwoman. We've only had two Hispanic council people over the course of the, the city's history, and one of them happens to be in the room tonight. And that's just not fair. I think one of the issues that I, when growing up here in Fullerton, I've always felt my parents taught me about service and about giving back and about wanting to participate in the community. What I've done is I've been involved with a number of different organizations from the Democratic Party to my local chamber of commerce to my church groups. And one of the things that I've always seen is that, well, why, can't, why couldn't I run for city council? And the reason why that came up and why I'm so supportive of district elections is based on the last average, and a lot of you know this already, that the last city council race cost each of you on the average of 60 to about $100,000 to run a statewide election, a uh, citywide election. And for $9,000 a year, that's not that much of a return for the service that you give to the city. And if there were more people, let's say in my district on the east side, who wanted to run, they, that basically prices them out of the process. And I think a lot, a lot of us who are not Korean or Hispanic are looking at ways we can serve, but we can't because it's just literally that expensive to run a citywide election. And I would want to have a relationship with my neighbors. I think one of one of the biggest things that I, I mean I, I've been active within the city. I know or have met most of you on, on different occasions, and that's one of the reasons why I almost feel like this it's an idea whose time has come. Anaheim has passed it. We should we should be looking at this not only from a Korean Hispanic perspective, but from increasing the diversity of the council. Thank you.
Hi, my name is Glenda Flock. I'm a 59-year resident of the city of Fullerton. Uh, born and raised here, and the city has grown immensely. Um, 110 years ago, which is before I was a resident, uh, the southwest corner of Fullerton uh, by the near Ornsthorpe was uh, proposed to be called Ornsthorpe Town. And um, even then they recognized that there seemed to be some different districts in the, in the city of Fullerton. The population has grown. Uh, there's over 140,000 residents now. Uh, since I was born, there's uh, over a tenfold increase in population. And I think it's time for us to adopt uh, to uh, have compliance with the law and like our neighboring cities uh, adjust to a five district city format. Um, I encourage you to support the uh, proposal uh, here right now for a transparent community action plan, a, a transparent community action plan and um, district elections will recreate, create greater local control and more responsive local government. Thank you. Thank you. Let's speak to you. Good evening, Council. My name is Barbara Nelson. I moved to Fullerton in 1988, which sounds like a lot of years, until as I raised my kids, all three of them here in Fullerton, the immense number of people I met who had grown up here, whose parents lived here and they chose to stay in Fullerton. And it had that fall, small town community of my kids are still in touch with people they met at the preschool at Fullerton College, no less. However, the reality is the city has grown. And while we value that small town experience, um, I think that it's hard for us to accept and adjust to the changes that have happened. I see in front of me five individuals, and regardless of any political point of view, who are dedicated public servants. And I applaud and respect anyone who steps up to serve appointed or in elected positions. However, as I look at the five council people, as opposed to my experience at Fullerton Community College as a student when I returned there, my um, own children as they went through the public schools, this council doesn't reflect this community. And it is simply time, in spite of what I know will be personal sacrifice on some of yours part, which is, you know, if there was a way to mitigate that, I'd be all in favor of it. But we need representation from the entire city. We need, and I feel one of the strongest ways to maintain some of that small town feeling is to have your neighborhood council person, the person who knows the community, knows its needs, knows its challenges, and is willing to represent that. So I would really urge you both as a fiscally responsible move to not oppose this, but to support it all the way through, that we come up with the best map, the best set of districts, that we move forward with this process in a very transparent way so that we end up with good districts and good representation. And I always want Fullerton to be the one to be proud of, to lead the way, to set the example. And you all have an opportunity to do that. So I hope you will. Thank you. Uh, good evening, Sean Payton. Uh, I was really astounded by one of the phrases that was made during the opening presentation. We talked about the reason we're doing this is because we want to avoid voter dilution. I, I, that, that, what we're doing is, is voter dilution. What we're considering right now is voter dilution. I mean, let's think about this for a second. Right now, everyone here has five city council votes. Because I can look at every single one of you in the eye and say, do what I want you to do, or I'll vote you out next November. And everyone here can do that right now. We pass this, and we only get to look at one. Greg, I think that'll be you. Uh, that's it. I don't get an opportunity to go to the other four council members and make that same pitch. And nobody else is going to have that opportunity either. But you know who does have that opportunity? People who have the money to write the campaign checks. You see, the police union, the chamber of commerce, the uh, other unions in the city, Cal State Fullerton, they still get five votes after we implement this. They're going to write a check to every single one of you. I only get one vote. You'll only get one vote unless you want to write a check, which means, from a practical matter, we've had a lot of high-density fights that have been coming up and that are going to come up. We've got the downtown core and corridor plan. We've got the college town plan. 
we implement this, what we do is we, we absolutely guarantee that whoever represents the downtown district will vote no on this. But we're going to make it very easy for the other four council members to vote yes, because developers who want to have that plan are going to write the checks, and you never have to face the voters for the consequence of that vote. Same thing with College Town. On the east side of the town, that council member is not going to vote for that. The other four council members really don't have a reason not to. So I think if you want to avoid voter dilution, you give everybody the opportunity to cast mm -hmm. five votes for city council, just yeah. like the people who have the money, like the big checks. Uh, as far as the specific proposals of this and how we go forward, um, I wrote I wrote an email to I don't know if you got it. I, I, I was not really clear about what this presentation was about, so it's a little different than what I said in my email, what it sounded like when I read the staff report. Um, this idea of these individual meetings, i got to be candid, it sounds less like uh, information and more like enabling people to figure out how to turn the situation to their advantage. I'm a little concerned about that as well. Uh, I think the meetings with the community are important. I will have those. That's fine. Those should be after 6 o'clock so that people can participate. Uh, but I think we need to really think about the, co the negative consequences and the representation that we're going to lose if we go to picking just one city council member instead of picking all five. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, speaker. Please. Good evening, Council Member uh, Sharon Quirk Silva, former mayor and former state assembly member. Uh, I want to start by thanking the council. I know that uh, going through this journey, as many other cities have gone through, can uh, cause quite a stir, not only from constituents, but yourself, to really think about how are we going to make this change. Uh, so I applaud you for uh, moving forward on this. I know that our school districts are also grappling with this discussion. Uh, we saw firsthand here in Orange County uh, when the statewide Citizens Redistricting Commission helped unite communities uh, through this very same type of process. The commission process began by first listening to the people. It showed, in all due respect to uh, your uh, the gentleman that has been hired tonight, uh, that we have experts who will walk us through this process because as um, I believe it's already been settled and now the next step is to move forward on a process. Uh, but the real experts on moving forward in mapping in Fullerton and districting are the people who live here in our community, are those people who come from our neighborhoods, uh, that live here, that work here. That is why Fullerton's hearings are so critical. This process is critical. So whether you agree with it, whether you personally support it, whether the public comes together neighbor by neighbor, I encourage you as council member, us as community members, us as neighbors and friends, to move forward to this next step in the redistricting process as the most critical step which will determine whether the city succeeds or fails in this process. So we know this will move towards the ballot, but what will happen during that journey? Will we fight one against each other? Will we see hatred arise? Will we make this only about race? This is about neighborhood representation. As mayor, I created, and as a council member for eight years, the Fullerton Walk and Talk program. And though that was based on going into every single neighborhood, neighborhood by neighborhood, and listening to the people. Not saying I'm going to Maple to listen to the Latino neighbors, not saying I'm going up by Coyote Hills to listen to the Korean neighbors, but to find out what were those issues in those neighborhoods. And we have issues in neighborhoods that have nothing to do with race. So if you go into the Maple neighborhood, as I did on my walk and talk, one of my first times being a council member, and there were tree stubs that were cut about half this height. And my neighbors were like, why are those tree stubs cut that way? And I said, well, there's been a lot of construction, and I think it's just uh, because they're going to get back to They said, I'm sorry, council member, but it's been several years. Lighting. If you go into the Maple, the Maple neighborhood, you will see that lighting is an issue. That is not a race issue. That is a safety issue. So if you go to the Gilbert neighborhood, you will know that we have a high-density apartments where there's much gang-related activity. If you go over to the college area, you will know that the college town and college park area, that is a concern. So this is an issue about neighborhood representation. 
So the gentleman before me was speaking about, well, you can pick your council member. We will still be voting, but this is to increase participation. So as I conclude here, I know that we have some and many that are still not comfortable uh, with how we got here and that it's easy for some to decry the role of outside groups and judges. No one wants to be told what to do, whether it comes from the state, whether it's a mandate. We don't like that. We want to have our own local control. But the truth is, the transition to district elections is intended to protect those who too often don't have a voice, that too often haven't had the access. And sometimes that change doesn't come easy. We fight change. It's not comfortable. This process is an opportunity to make sure everyone has a chance to be heard. That's why meetings at night, meetings on Saturdays, one-to-one -one meetings. We have Founders Days uh, coming up. That would be a great paid place to have mapping out, a casual place to say, what do you think about this? Not everyone will be happy with the maps. Not everybody's going to like this. That is a given. But if people know that they were given a fair chance to participate, it will help everyone accept the outcome as fair. Remember, the ultimate goal is not just to draw maps, but maps that represent, that represent all members of our city. Indeed, this may be a legal necessity. Earlier this month, the legislature passed both AB 182 and AB 1301 which would prohibit district boundaries from being drawn in a manner that would impair the ability of a protected class to elect candidates of their choice and would subject boundaries to approval by the Secretary of the State. I am finishing right here. But whether legally required or not, it, it is not the point. The point is that representative districts are the right thing to do for Fullerton. Thank you for your time and attention. Thank you. Next speaker, please. I'm going to move the light uh, up to your right as you're talking. It uh, starts off green, it'll flash yellow, and when it's red, that means it's time to wrap up and let the next person talk. How about if I touch a button here? <laughs> you have to run that by our clerk. <laughs> okay. uh, uh, good evening, Mayor, Council, Joe. Uh, my name is Bobby Melendez, and uh, I grew up in the Maple area, which is predominantly Hispanic. Uh, I, I lived there. When I lived there, there was a, a lot of community activity uh, where we established a community center at Lippman Park for senior citizens. Uh, we uh, had to work with the police for to improve police community relations with Chief Herobedian. Uh, we also developed in 1979 the mural projects, which are affixed on Lemon Park. It was through the collaboration, cooperation, and communication between community and city council, and of course city staff. Uh, there was a lot of work being done. However, times have changed since the 70s, since the 80s. And I'm going to encourage the city council uh, to not only uh, support, but embrace district elections for the following reasons. Uh, since 2000, uh, there's been two city council decisions that, that have created irreparable harm to the Hispanic community, specifically the Maple area and the Richmond area. Case in point, one was enforce code enforcement, and what that authorized by the city council is that it targeted primarily the Maple area and the Richmond area to have enforced code enforcers go door to door, enter into private property, look into your backyard to see if there's a patio there, go back to the city hall to see if there was a permit. It only targeted that specific community. And it would be ludicrous for me to say that there were no permits in the other sides of, of Fullerton. What these code enforcement officers did is, like I said, they went on private property. Uh, it scared people, specifically the elderly community members who have owned homes there since for a long time. And if they got a letter from the city saying that it was either not up to code or you needed a permit, uh, they were frightened. Uh, they thought the police were after them, some moved, some got sick. 
it was just that bad. And I don't think there was any notices that went out. I don't think there's ever any campaign about it. There was no uh, awareness in the community. That should have never happened. It was that bad. Another issue was the Lemon Park murals. It's laid in waste right now. It's been refurbished by the city two times already since 1979. However, a former city councilman noticing that uh, a fix to the murals was uh, a statement that said the town I live in. And as you're going northbound towards Valencia Street and Maple, you'll see it. And uh, it's the town I live in. It's, it's a beautiful town. It's the town that I, I have pride in. And apparently the city councilman, who was a lawyer, uh, saw that affixed into a gang member's torso as a tattoo and immediately said that was associated with gang activity, that those murals uh, promote gang activity. And in doing that, it created a reactionary response, and it came this close from tearing down those murals. Um, Can you wrap up your thoughts, sir? Yes, sir. Thank you. So I encourage you, if, if these communities have representations from their community uh, to be up there, this kind of stuff will not happen. So I encourage you uh, to look into your hearts and hopefully uh, embrace it and support district voting. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good evening. My name is George Mankiewicz. I'm not a politician, so I'll be a lot faster than the last two speakers. My wife and I have lived here 35 years, uh, right across the street from Nicholas Junior High School. We raised both our sons here in Fullerton. And um, I like the city. I love the city. I enjoy uh, staying here. But I'm here to speak on behalf of district, uh, district elections. As you know, historically, most city council members come from the north side of the city. And electing our representatives by district will force this council to actually represent all parts of the city. And that, for that reason alone, uh, I encourage everyone in this room to support the district council. And I'm just wondering, is there anybody on the council now who is in favor of district elections? Yeah, no. The, um, Two things. One, uh, it's your opportunity for us to, uh, for you to speak and for us to take that in. Um, I think as the process rolls out, you'll get a, a feeling for where as individuals we stand and as a council we stand. Um, this is part of a settlement agreement, so we are moving this portion forward. Um, we do have some details we have to work out, and that's why we are uh, bringing in a consultant to work us through the public process. So. It's not really are we for it or against it, it's what is the process. Hopefully that and let's be clear, district elections will be on the ballot in 2016. That has been determined. The public process that gets us there is what we're talking about tonight. Okay. Thank you very much. Thank you. Next speaker, please. All right, members of the council, my name is Jeanette Vasquez. I was raised here in the city of Fullerton. Um, and for a very long time, I've also thought about raising a family here in the city um, for two reasons. Number one, this is a very tight-knit community that I believe contributed to my success. Um, I would like to add, I also grew up in the southwestern portion of the city. Um, and also the excellent schools that are in our town. Um, but as the city does continue to change, demographically, socioeconomically, and in many other ways that were mentioned earlier, I do encourage you on the council um, and the administration to undertake an inclusive process through the um, extensive outreach beyond just mainstream local media in order to ensure that all um, residents of Fullerton have a stake and a voice in, a process, in this process. Um, this will also ensure that we have a more civically engaged community and will further contribute to our thriving neighborhoods. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Hi, Kitty Jaramillo. I was born and raised here in Fullerton. Um, I wasn't going to speak tonight, but I feel like I want to explain a little bit now that I can talk, and now that we're at this point uh, in this lawsuit, that my um, 
my goal for this in doing this was when I left the city of Fullerton about 22 years ago to go work for the city of Santa Ana. They had uh, districts over there when I got there. And it was just so wonderful for me as a code enforcement officer, all of us, to be able to go to any council, not any council member, but a council member that represented that section of the city because they knew exactly what was going on there. This is so much about community and that's been my main goal for this, not racial, racial diversity of course is important. And that's also important to me. However, it's not the only thing that's important to me. You guys all know I've been involved in this community since I was able to, since I left the city. I couldn't get involved while I was working for the city, but once I left, then I was on every committee, I was on everything. But now I know that we don't have your support. I hope some of you will come over and support the district elections and come out and speak about it and not speak negative, negatively regarding it because it's a good thing. It's something that we've needed for a lot, lot of years, a lot of years. And if your heart is really in the community, then you see, then you'll, you'll see. Look deep within yourselves and you'll see that that's the main, that's the main thing. Take race out of it if you need to take race out of it in order to understand it. But it is a matter of diversity now. Our city is not the same city I was born in, you know, 61 years ago. It's not like that anymore. It's different. And we can't just stick to the same old, the same old ways, the same old guard here in Fullerton that we've always had. I know George mentioned a little while ago, most, almost all of our representatives had, have always been north of Chapman. I didn't even know that um, Councilman Whitaker lived in Southwest Fullerton until it was his fourth year on council. And I was involved. I was involved in the city. And I didn't even know that. Why? Why didn't I know that? Something's wrong with the system. We're broken. And we need to change it. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, speaker, I wasn't planning on talking about this, so I didn't draw one of those forms. So I, excuse me. Yeah. Again, I'm Tony Package. Um, let's talk about the process. I got a couple questions about the process. Okay, uh, the process. The first part of the process is we're going to have they're going to have these meetings September 23rd to 26th, Wednesday through Saturday. That's next week. How? Then the next one would be October 1st to the 3rd, and they're a week later. How are we going to get any any? What? If I could add to that, you can stop this clock. Uh, those are office times that he would be available for appointments. <coughs> uh, not necessarily continuing meetings every night with whomever it would be open for appointments. So I understand what you're saying, and uh, short, I don't disagree notice. at all. Short notice. Absolutely. Short and I notice. think there's going to be plenty of other opportunities, but I think that's something that bears uh, some clarification. Yes, thank you. That, that was my clarification. Thank you. I appreciate that. And how do you register for those times? Uh, there, call the number at the end of that slide or okay. call, call yeah. us in our city clerk. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Secondly, um, once we have this election, I say it passes, when does the district elections begin? Just after the election. Just after the election. 2018. 2018. Yes. Okay, okay. Thank you. I believe those that are elected serve out their terms. Yes. Correct. So it kind of phases in. Okay. And last, but where where are these community meetings going to be held? Uh, is that going to be on the website? And that's is that the information, Joe. You're going to be sending out and everything. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Next speaker, please. Good evening, Council Mayor. Uh, I just want to come up and, and piggyback on what Kitty said. Uh, I've lived here. I think I've lived here uh, half my lifetime. I was thinking about it. I lived in LA for the first half and in Fortson for the second half. I'm 50 years old. But uh, I lived in three parts of the city, up by the college, by Cal State Fullerton, down by Nicholas, and now by the JC. And uh, through the years I've lived there, I've jogged, I've walked around, and I've caught it. I have noticed a difference in communities. And 
And when this when this district came up, I, I really thought, you know, this will allow the different communities in the city to have uh, someone local who can who knows the area and say, hey, this we need this fix or we need this uh, to look at. And, and, and it's not necessarily about a, a racial ethnic ethnic um, issue here. It, obviously, that, that will play a part in it because most of the uh, south of Commonwealth is Latino, so that, that will play a part. But uh, I think, again, having lived in the city for 25 years in three different areas, I, I really see the difference in community. And having taught at Nicholas for 18 years now, and ha having uh, gone up to other schools to visit, to, for conferences, there really is a difference in the types of families, the types of needs that different communities have. So uh, again, we're going through the process and, and uh, the district elections will be on the ballot. And uh, I hope, you know, again, we, we all engage and uh, allow each, each group to be heard and, uh, <coughs> and listened to. And uh, you know, in the Fullerton, um, uh, I think after all is said and done, we'll, we'll have the best result, result for Fullerton. And uh, thank you for your time. Thank you. Any other speakers on this matter before we close this public hearing? Jesus just had the third surgery on his eye last Thursday, which is why he's wearing big shades tonight. Thank you. Not seeing anyone else come forward, we'll go ahead and close this public hearing. Bring it back to council for deliberation. Uh, did any council members have any questions? I don't have any questions, but I, if I may, I'd like to kick off the discussion by saying that I move to approve the community participation plan and direct staff to implement the community participation plan. Second. And um, I would just say that uh, I want to reiterate what I said. The decision to put district elections on the ballot in 2016 has already been made. That will happen. And we are um, going to enter into a community participation process where we all have um, the opportunity to weigh in on what we think those districts look like. And I encourage everyone in the city who cares about the future of your city representation to be a part of that process. Uh, and as well, I, I mean, this process through state law really is that um, if this ballot initiative and if the districts um, don't pass uh, when we put it on the ballot, then this could simply go to a judge who doesn't know Fullerton, um, who can just write these districts for us and tell us what our districts will look like. And I don't think that's a good way um, to write this new representation plan for Fullerton. I do think in this scenario, the best thing for all of us to do is to be very involved in the process uh, and weigh in with what you think represents your neighborhood, and your community the best. Councilman Chief. I, I did have a couple of practical questions. The, st the re staff report talks about staff uh, working uh, here. Do we have specific staff assigned? Or is that who's in, who on the staff is, is in charge? Well, primarily uh, the city staff, it's uh, Lucinda will be managing uh, the leading up to the electoral process of this, uh, and we also have Chi Chung, uh, PIO, and we'll have uh, consultants that we'll need along the way to facilitate the public uh, input. And my other question there is a frequent reference to an outreach team. Is that to be determined later? Who is, who, who is the team who will make that determination? Well, we're working with uh, the city attorney's office to make sure that we follow the, the settlement agreement terms. Uh, and also uh, Mr. Eli, Eli, as well as Chi Chung. So that's kind of the, sort of the main consultant, and our PIO will be managing the media to, to generate the interest and the, the involvement. I see. It looks like the outreach team has a lot of responsibilities, if I read the staff report right. Well, we certainly... Are, are you selected? A, is, that a, a, is the team chosen by you as city manager? Yes, it's a, to, in order to implement this plan, we'll assign the appropriate staff. Um, could have uh, other staff be involved if, if we need to. Parks and Rec will probably be doing the hosting of the community meetings at, at the community centers. So it'll be a broad-based uh, effort with the number of okay. staff. I was wondering who specifically might be on the team or how that determination would be made. It will not come back to council. Is that what I'm hearing? Uh, I'd be happy to provide a report at the next meeting, but we're ready to get started. Uh, it just depends on the, uh, 
the, the nature of they'll they'll incorporate the work into their into their our current current assignments, and we'll uh, we're ready to get going. Most of this is publicizing and accommodating the meetings, and so between PIO, city clerk, and uh, other staff that are needed. Okay, well, it is a, going. kind of a generic term, the way it's used, I think. So. Okay, no more questions. I would ask that the uh, city manager and the uh, city clerk place a continuing item on the agenda, at least for the remainder of my term as mayor, and of course, Mayor Pro Tem, uh, she has her term as mayor, can, can either continue that or discontinue it. But just have a continuing item for an update on district elections and what the latest activities are and what the upcoming activities are so that at least twice a month we're given a report to the public about what's going on. Great. We will plan to do that. We'll kind of do it consistent with the, uh, how we've been doing the drought report uh, response. We'll have department head or city clerk give us a report. Okay. Um, I have a question. Go ahead. Uh, under the recommendation, number one says hold a public hearing regarding city council voting district formation and a community participation plan. Is this the public hearing that's being referenced? That's yes, correct. Yes. Was there a chance that we could not have held a public hearing? It was just sort of odd that it was included as a recommendation it's, it's part of when legal, we were doing it. It's the legal requirement you have to go through. So, yeah. We're getting the legal, the legal test. <laughs> well, many of the speakers spoke about the fact that our city is changing, and indeed it is. I moved here in 1970 which is 20 years ago, 30, 45 years ago. So I've lived more than half of my life uh, in this city, raised my kids here. And I know something about discrimination because when I was first elected to the city council, I think I was the fifth woman in over 100 years that had been elected to the city council. I believe I was the first or second woman who had ever served on a planning commission. And I remember distinctly that one of the uh, the chair of the planning commission at the time I first applied and that's all I ever wanted to do was just be on the planning commission because I love those kinds of issues and he told me that since I was a wife and a mother and a real estate person at the time that I had a very full plate and he didn't think I could handle it so things have changed since then and our community has also changed since then one thing that that all of you need to understand is that this council has all approved a settlement uh, a settlement agreement in which we have agreed to place district elections the issue of district elections on the ballot all of us are behind that and not only that but we have also as part of that agreement uh, agreed that not, none of us here will oppose district elections in our official capacity. So for those of you in the audience who, who have asked us to enlist our support, that's already happened. I'm going to ask you something too, though. In my many years over city council, one of the things that happened over and over again, and I'm not sure why this was, but there were certain commissions that that required that we select a representative from certain areas of the city. And I can remember that in Southwest Fullerton, when we needed to elect somebody to our CDBG, Community Block Development Grant Money Committees, we could not get any applicants from the Southwest area. It is no secret that certain ethnic groups do not vote nearly according to their numbers and there have been serious consequences related to that. For example, the Latino community is a powerhouse, could be a powerhouse in this community, but that has not come to fruition because they have simply not voted. This goes two ways. You have responsibilities, we have responsibilities. <clears throat> so I would ask you to give that some consideration when it comes time to participate in this process. Your voice will be needed. We need to hear that. So, my thoughts. I support it. Okay, there is a motion and a second. I think the only council member that hasn't spoken is council member Whitaker. Did you have any thoughts on that that you wanted to... Well, certainly as a member of the council who often is in the minority, even on votes on issues, 
one area of diversity that's often overlooked is diversity of opinion, diversity of policy preferences, and diversity of representing certain areas of interest as well. There is also a strong partisan element, even though we're all nonpartisan up here on the dais as far as the elected role, there's never such a thing as a nonpartisan election. So one of the things that I would look forward to is having true diversity on the council. I, I have witnessed over many years as an activist city councils who prize and always want 5-0 votes, who want absolute lockstep votes. And somehow that's viewed as being a good thing. To me, that's never a good thing. You really do need individuals up here making different arguments and putting out the best arguments that they can across the board. Any time that you have a council that is completely in lockstep and in agreement, that is not a healthy thing. So from the standpoint that if one of the outcomes of this change would be to create true diversity in terms of the ideas and the policies being presented up here, then I wholeheartedly support that effort. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. There is a motion and a second. At this point, uh, we'll call the question. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Abstained? Passes 5-0. Mr. Mayor, may we take a brief break? I think that people may want to leave. Sure. Why don't we take a uh, very quick, um, we do it in 10? Usually I say 5 and it ends up being 10. It's 5 minute break. I'll see you in 10. <laughs>